I didn't expect that I would script this, but I have. I move around a lot. There's no standing sign here. I move around a lot. What I mean is that I live in Melbourne, where I've lived for 24 years, besides one or two stints overseas. Everything is better when I'm moving. This morning I was feeling the sense of dread after listening to the news on the radio, thinking about doing this here tonight. After reading in The Guardian that all ABC sound libraries except the one in Melbourne would close soon, after seeing a person in the street with a helmet on, who for some reason I thought was threatening, and in two seconds I made up a whole scenario in my head about where that situation may end up. As I rode off down Queen Street to teach, I realised that all I had to do was get to the studio and even though I still get really nervous teaching a group of people, I also know that what we do together, how we listen together, how we listen to one another and experience our bodies getting sweaty and exuberant or doing something really simple like rolling our heads from side to side while lying on the floor or when you just actually lie on the floor or when you just stand there with our eyes closed, listening to our bodies, something happens. And, well, that can change something. After class today, somebody said people like participating in something. I think I've always had a desire to change the space I'm in. And I think for a lot of the time, that desire is manifested in movement. Through moving, I change the energy of the space. Moving with a group of people drastically shifts the energy of the space. We move the space around us. We touch the air. We make currents. We enact fantasies. We imagine a drama in many parts with intervals. We stop. We imagine a future. We imagine how to start again, and then we actually start again. We focus energy intentionally. We let the focus wander through somewhere else, and then we refocus. We think skeletally. <laughs> we think historically. We think locally, globally. We think through imitation, replication, association and then not thinking about thinking something but just move and understand what is happening through moving. Enter the space. <laughs> Exit the space. I said I'd scripted this, but I haven't. The time is scripted. My sternum, my skeleton.
In choosing a significant moment of work or influential experience, I thought a lot about my own experience. And I quite like the idea of no front. I thought a lot about my own experience, knowledge and memory and connections between things. I also thought about the work I wish that I had made. So, I'm a dancer and a choreographer. Well, I haven't made that many works on other people. <laughs> I always feel like it's a bit of a failed moment. And I like to play with things I don't know that much about and I hang on desperately to the past while pretending I reject it but I'm also quite fond of contradictions. I used to want to be a cartographer, maybe a water fountain designer, an architect, an urban planner. I still kind of hang on to that one a bit. I was never good at drawing at all, but I was very fascinated with the idea of being able to draw. I'm fascinated with watching people and wondering how things connect and how one thing leads to another. So here we are. You can come in. Don't feel like you have to. You can leave. You can leave and you can enter. You can, anyone can leave. <laughs> Rhythmic spaces. In 2000, I participated in a workshop for the London International Workshop Festival with two French dancers called Dominique and Francois Dupuy. Here I was introduced to the work of Adolphe Appiah and Emile Jacques de Delcroze, who I'd heard of before, Delcroze, but I had no idea about the work of Adolphe Appiah. At this time, I was 26 years old. I had been living in Melbourne for six years after having moved from Perth. I was a dedicated dancer, trying really hard and mostly performing in the work of other choreographers whilst, whilst rather shyly experimenting with making my own work. I'd made a few works which were shown at the Women's Gallery in Fitzroy, which is now a clothing shop, at the Motorworks Gallery in South Yarra, which is part of Melbourne Grammar for the Next Wave Festival and at Dance House in North Carlton. And I was also working with a choreographer and dancer called Shelley Lassica. I had been struggling with this thing called dance and wondering how it could connect more broadly. I was, and maybe still am, sort of naive about what I think the possibilities of it are. Adolf Appi was born in 1862 in Switzerland. He was an architect, stage designer and theorist of stage lighting and decor and son of the Red Cross founder Louis Appia. His theories and realised works transformed the practice of stage design and he had a great influence on the development of performing arts. His influence was vast and lasting and was mainly due to his drawings more than his actual productions. Emile Jacques Delcroze was born in 1865. He was a Swiss composer, musician and music educator who conceived an exceptional form of music education. He invented a series of listening exercises that mainly had to be performed while singing along with and beating time to music. They were intended to heighten the inner representation of sense and sound of rhythm. His effort was to find ways to help students develop skills of feeling more hearing, creating, imagining, connecting, memorising, reading and writing, as well as performing and interpreting music. He worked in order to free the students from the conflicts between mind and body, feeling and expression. He recognised that rhythm and dynamic were entirely dependent on the movements in the muscular system. All degrees of time can be experienced, understood and expressed through the body.
he felt that the enthusiasm of musical feelings depended on the sharpness of the physical sensations. He was convinced that the combination of intense listening and the responses of the body would generate and release a powerful musical force. I've done Del Crow's Eurythmics once and I didn't really like it. Adolf Appiah and Emile Jacques Dalcroze worked at Hallorau near Dresden. The Hallorau Festival Theatre was built in 1909. It was one of the birthplaces of modernism, as well as an important artefact of European cultural and architectural history. It housed the rhythmic dance school, <laughs> which has nothing to do with other things. Adolf Appiah was among the new wave of set designers to reject the then standard two-dimensional painted backdrops in favour of creating three-dimensional pieces because he believed that shade was as necessary as light to form a connection between the performer and the setting of the performance in time and space. Through the use of control of light intensity, colour and manipulation, Appiah created a new perspective of scene design and stage lighting. He believed staging had to be a spatial expression of the musical score. He recognised that the three-dimensional reality of the performer, the dancer, the actor, the singer, everything which conflicted with their presence had to vanish from the stage, including the two-dimensional flat scenery. Appiah had already known about the idea of musical gymnastics, which did full justice to the play and playing of gesture. Appiah started to convince Dalcroze to work with steps and levels. By adding a vertical element, Appiah enhanced the consciousness of space of one's own body weight. He created, in 1909, a series of ten sketches. His thing was about the three-dimensional space. So I've got three super bad reproductions on two-dimensional pieces of paper. highly pixelated. When I first saw the images of Appiah's rhythmic spaces in 2000, which were really beautiful sketches compared to <laughs> these reproductions, I was obsessed by the use of light, steps and platforms. There was such beauty and stillness and a potential to imagine what might occur. For me, it was a perfect performance. There are two works which come to mind which I wish I had made. I have fantasies about the work I might make in the future, but I also know it could fail.
if I'm honest, my interest in Appy's work has only been reignited because there's an artist whose work I really love, and they referenced Appy's work. Like Appiah rejecting the two-dimensional painted flats, I had rejected his contribution to modern scenography because it already happened. It was already shaping the work I'd made and other people's work, and I didn't necessarily need to keep learning more about it. I was just doing it. It was there. I was in a moment of rejecting my past and trying my hardest to be different to those people I'd worked with in my 20s, but then I saw Ulla. I wish I could say about my work, these fantasies operate to design it in a way so I can change the experience of the performers and the audience. I want to involve the people and the public looking at the work so they are in the same position as the performers. There are some stairs. Maybe I'll elevate you right now. Let's all gather in the centre here. Let's start to climb on the stairs slowly. No, no, that's too fast. Let's go slower. Here we are in Hallerau, it used to be called M Pavilion, and it's located in Dresden, in Germany, it's 1909. Let's go physically higher in the space, let's become taller. Let's move without words. I once wrote a grant application for something called Collaborating with Space, I didn't get it. I'm thinking about how to, col uh, to okay, how do we com collaborate with the space right now. Tonight we are here and that's different to yoga here at 7.15 this morning. How can people be together in the space? How can I activate an object? I did an exercise once which was based, it was a stick you'd throw at each other. So someone might have a stick and then throw it horizontally. We could like imagine doing the exercise. So I've got a stick, and you have to catch it with two hands. And it's like theater games, isn't it? It's pretty bad. Yeah, and you can throw it back. Okay. Great, perfect. I wish I had made the film work. It has a golden sun and an elderly gray moon. I really wish I'd done that. It's so good. That reignited my interest in Appiah's work, and I realized it was something that had always been there. Gabrielle Lester also made a work between 1999 and 2017 called How to Act. I saw it once, and I thought the title was great. I like to reveal the apparatus of the performance. So let's all gather into the middle of the space. I'm mean at this time. <laughs> and even the man up the back with the navy blazer on. <laughs> and all we're going to really do is take one step upwards. Those of you that don't feel like doing a big step onto the stair, you can just take the small step. We can use these steps as well. You can choose a leg which you step up on. And we're just going to go step up slow and then step down. <laughs> 